Greetings to all and welcome back to the series of lectures on cross-coupling chemistry. So far, you have been introduced to the main principles of cross-coupling technologies and the most successful phosphine ligands enabling these reactions. In this lecture, we will concentrate on the design of the main families of inheterocyclic carbene ligands used in homogeneous catalysis. Inheterocyclic carbons or NHC ligands are a class of stable singlet carbons with a neutral divalent carbon atom directly attached to at least one nitrogen within a heterocyclic scaffold. There are two major groups of inheterocyclic carbons. The first group includes carbons based on imidazoles, abbreviated as NHC ligands. The second group of carbons is based on pyrrolidine. They are often named cyclocalcolamino carbons and abbreviated as CAAC ligands. In heterocyclic carbons were first described in 1968 by Ophiel. It was found that when heated, imidazolium salts, possessing a mixed chromium hydride carbonyl counteranion, lose a molecule of hydrogen and generate an NHC chromium carbonyl complex. This discovery was a mere accident as Ophiel obtained the NHC chromium complex while aiming to purify the parent imidazolium salt by sublimation. These ligands received little attention after their initial description. However, Interest in NHC ligands increased exponentially after the isolation and characterization of the first free carbene, which was shortly followed by the first demonstrations of the utility of inheterocyclic carbons as ligands for homogeneous catalysis by Hermann. Compared to other classes of carbons, NHC ligands are remarkably stable. Simple carbons decompose above cryogenic temperatures, cyclopropanate alkenes, dimerize, and insert into otherwise unreactive CH bonds. In contrast, NHC ligands can be stored, bottled, and even distilled. Although NHC ligands still do not surpass the stability of classic phosphines such as triphenylphosphine and typically must be stored under an inert atmosphere. Presently, many NHC ligands are commercialized and sold protected in the form of CO2 adducts or imidazolium salts. Free carbene ligands can be generated from CO2 adducts by heating while imidazolium salts generate corresponding NHC ligands upon treatment with a strong base. Inheterocyclic carbons are present in nature and play a central role in enzymatic catalysis. Thiamine, otherwise known as vitamin B1, is a protected inheterocyclic carbene and can be deprotected by a base. In nature, thiamine acts as an effective organocatalyst, enabling asymmetric aldol condensations and related transformations. It has been proven that thiamine can also serve as an effective NHC ligand for metal-catalyzed reactions. Initially, inheterocyclic carbons were thought of merely as phosphine mimics. However, with each passing year, the difference between phosphine donor ligands and NHC ligands becomes more and more apparent. Inheterocyclic carbons are particularly good ligands for the late transition metals and are normally better sigma donors than phosphines. As such, the metal NHC bond is typically stronger than the corresponding metal phosphine bond. In fact, the bond strength in the NHC ruthenium complexes has been estimated by calorimetric methods to be double that of corresponding phosphine ruthenium bonds. Similar observations were seen for nickel NHC and nickel phosphine complexes. NHC ligands are singlet carbons, which means that they have one empty p orbital parallel to the lone pair orbitals of nitrogens and one perpendicular sp2 hybridized orbital filled with two electrons, notably nucleophilic and available for sharing with a metal for complexation. In NHC ligands, two electronic effects work in parallel, determining the stability and sigma donating ability of the ligand. Nitrogens share their lone pairs with the empty orbital of the carbene, which, in turn, decreases the pi accepting abilities of the ligand. In other words, NHC ligands do not participate much in backbonding and do not decrease the electron density at the coordinated metal. Nitrogens, being more electronegative than carbon, decrease the electron density at the carbene by sigma electron withdrawing. This phenomenon increases the energy separation between the singlet and triplet ground states and contributes to the further stabilization of the carbene. This diagram shows the comparable sigma donor abilities of different carbene ligands. Cyclocalcolamino carbons are among the strongest donors known to date, as the sigma electron withdrawing from the carbene is done by only one nitrogen. The pi accepting abilities of NHC ligands also strongly depend on the number of nitrogens stabilizing the carbene. Carbons based on imidazoles have two nitrogens connected to the carbene atom, resulting in higher stabilization of the empty p orbital due to the delocalization of two lone pairs of electrons with the empty orbital. 
Consequently, cyclocalcolamino carbons exhibit enhanced pi accepting properties since they have only one nitrogen atom for the stabilization of the empty p orbital of the carbene. Therefore, cyclocalcolamino carbons demonstrate a pronounced duality. They are both the best sigma donors and the strongest pi acceptors among the classical NHC ligands. The pi accepting abilities of NHC ligands can be further increased by the introduction of electron withdrawing groups around the nitrogen atoms as demonstrated in the underlined examples. The backbonding in carbons is best illustrated in ruthenium catalysts used for olefin metathesis. Here, we can examine a representative example from the hovey de Grubb second-generation catalysts, where ruthenium is simultaneously bound to two carbons. The nhc ruthenium bond is better described as a single bond since the backbonding in these systems is not prominent due to the stabilization of the empty p orbital of the carbene by the lone pairs of nitrogens. This stabilizing effect is illustrated by the inclusion of a curve between the nitrogen atoms. In contrast, the second ruthenium carbene bond is more accurately described as a double bond, as the empty p orbital of the second carbene is not stabilized by neighboring groups or atoms. The methods for quantifying the stereoelectronic properties of NHC ligands are numerous and very similar to those described for phosphenes. The most common method is based on estimating the overall donating capability of NHC ligands using Tolman electronic parameters, specifically the IR stretching frequencies of CO ligands and model transition metal complexes. Originally developed for phosphine ligands and widely employed in the investigation of NHC ligands, this method is not without some intrinsic limitations and does not fully characterize the pi accepting effects of the ligand. Alternatively, the analysis of NMR signals from the main group nuclei involved in the corresponding NHC complexes provides a valuable experimental tool for evaluating the pi accepting properties of carbene ligands. The two main methods, which generally yield comparable results, are based on comparing phosphorus and selenium NMR chemical shifts for appropriate adducts of carbons with phosphorus and selenium. Phosphenes and NHC ligands have similar electronic structures, but there is a significant difference in their topology when coordinated to the metal center. The three substituents of the phosphine project backward, away from the metal, thereby forming a cone, while the substituents on the NHC nitrogen atoms project forward to form a pocket around the metal center. This arrangement in the case of NHC ligands allows the topology of the substituents to have a much stronger impact on the metal center. The steric properties of phosphines are primarily characterized by their cone angle. However, this may not be the most suitable metric for NHC ligands, as they tend to be less symmetrical and their steric impact can be unevenly distributed. To address the lack of useful and quantitative descriptors for evaluating and comparing the steric impact of NHC ligands, the concepts of percent buried volume and steric maps have been developed. These can be measured exclusively through DFT calculations or, alternatively, based on crystallographic data obtained for a given ligand. The percent buried volume is defined as the percentage of a sphere around the metal center occupied by a given ligand. This metric does not require the ligand to adopt a symmetrical geometrical shape and can describe mono and polydentate ligands, as well as phosphines with phosphorus bearing more than one type of group. While the percent buried volume quantifies the steric profile of a ligand, it provides limited detail regarding the specific arrangement of this steric impact. To address this limitation, steric maps were introduced offering a way to represent and visualize the steric profile of NHC ligands, particularly unsymmetrical ones. Steric maps display, through colored contours, the steric bulk presented to the metal center, dividing it into quadrants. These maps help appreciate how the steric impact is distributed throughout space, identifying features such as catalytic pockets and potentially revealing the origin of enantioselectivity for certain catalysts. Here are some commonly used NHC ligands with calculated percent buried volumes. The greatest steric hindrance is observed in systems with large groups attached to the phenyl rings connected to the nitrogens. The comparison of percent buried volumes for NHC ligands with various ring sizes is presented. The larger the ring of the NHC ligand, the bulkier the system, as these large rings cause the phenyl groups connected to nitrogens to approach the metal more closely. Here is presented a general structure for an NHC ligand-based palladium precatalyst. It offers numerous possibilities for tuning and modifying the activity of the system. To ensure the stability of the catalyst, the groups connected to the nitrogens must be bulky. Otherwise, there is a risk of deactivation through cyclometallation involving our three groups. However, 
This does not mean that you must always have bulky groups here. For bulky substrates, the use of non-bulky NHC ligands is typically beneficial. Additionally, in controlling the sterics and stability of your catalyst, you can adjust the sigma donor properties of the ligand. If you aim for a strong sigma donor NHC ligand, then our three groups must be either alkyls or RNs possessing electron donating groups. When working with bulky substrates, it might be beneficial to have non-bulky or three groups connected to nitrogens, combined with functional groups at positions 4 and 5 of the imidazole ring. Extra functional groups in the ring can restrict the free rotation of our three groups without significantly altering the sterics of the system. Additionally, you can significantly change the pi accepting abilities of the ligand by introducing strong electron withdrawing groups. For instance, carbonyl groups will reduce the pi electron donation from the lone pairs of nitrogens to the empty p orbital of the carbene. The bulkiness of the ligand can be increased or decreased by adjusting the ring size. It is worth noting that saturated NHC ligands are better sigma donors compared to their corresponding unsaturated analogs. For this particular palladium-based precatalyst, you can enhance the kinetics of dissociation of the supporting pyridine ligand by using systems with either bulky or electron-withdrawing substituents at the pyridine ring. Here, it is worth recalling how stereoelectronic effects influence the elementary reactions of cross-couplings initiated by palladium phosphine complexes. As you may recall, in the case of bulky phosphines, the active forms of the catalyst are coordinatively unsaturated monologated species. The strong sigma donor phosphines facilitate oxidative addition, and the bulkiness of the system is crucial for reductive elimination. All of these factors are equally important for reactions enabled by palladium catalysts incorporating bulky NHC ligands. The first step in the couplings initiated by NHC palladium complexes involves the activation of the precatalyst. For this specific precatalyst, this includes the dissociation of the supporting pyridine ligand and the reduction of palladium-2 to the active palladium-0 form. The reductant can be either the organometallic reagent present in the reaction media or other reagents. In the case of bulky NHC ligands, the active form of the catalyst is a coordinatively unsaturated, electron-rich system that undergoes oxidative addition with the electrophilic coupling partner. It is important to note that NHC ligands are typically better sigma donors than phosphines, facilitating oxidative additions, even with challenging substrates like aryl chlorides. Following oxidative addition, the system remains coordinatively unsaturated, which supports the transmetallation. During transmetallation, the catalytic system becomes strained because the nucleophile substituting the X ligand on palladium is usually larger than the X ligand. Consequently, the bulkiness of the NHC ligand promotes reductive elimination, leading to the product and the formation of the active form of the coordinatively unsaturated palladium-0 intermediate, initiating a new cycle. There are several thousand NHC ligands reported to date, playing a central role not only in cross-coupling chemistry but also in olefin metathesis, organocatalysis, and other fields of homogeneous catalysis. Presented here are the most frequently used NHC ligands along with their corresponding abbreviated names. Most of them are commercially available and are typically sold in protected forms, which include imidazolium salts or CO2 adducts, as mentioned earlier. The strong binding of the electron-rich carbene to the metal center makes NHC palladium complexes particularly stable. As a result, reasonable alternatives to the protected NHC ligands are corresponding well-defined palladium complexes presented here. Some of them are palladium-0 complexes and do not require reducing agents for preliminary activation. Others are palladium-2 complexes with additional ligands that can easily dissociate or undergo reductive elimination, generating active NHC palladium-0 species. Inspired by the astonishing activity of the Grubb's third-generation catalyst in olefin metathesis, Organ and co-workers developed a family of air-stable and user-friendly palladium NHC pre-catalysts based on bulky carbons and easily dissociating 3-chloropyridine. Organ's palladium NHC complexes are commercialized and abbreviated as palladium Pepsi complexes. They have developed several generations of palladium Pepsi complexes by systematically increasing the steric bulk at the ortho positions of the infinal moieties of the NHC ligands. To sum it up, in this lecture, you were introduced to the main groups of NHC ligands used in homogeneous catalysis. We examined the stereoelectronic effects influencing the stability and potency of inheterocyclic carbons as ligands for late transition metals. In particular, it was demonstrated how the stereoelectronic effects of NHC ligands can be well-tuned and modified for targeted applications.
You also saw that a practical method for the protection and storage of NHC ligands is the preparation of corresponding well-defined metal complexes. This is a good point to stop, as the following lecture will concentrate on the use of pre-formed catalysts and cross-coupling reactions. Thank you for your attention.